said, hey, no. you guys, you guys didn't buy me what I wanted. He feels like this guy is a little baby. You know the song that says, I want it all, no. I want it all, keep going, keep going. I want it all, <laughs> and I want it now. So this guy here, he wants everything and he wants it now. So if you don't give it to him, he's going to throw you a temper tantrum. So you know what I will do? <laughs> I will just let him pack up. See ya. Maybe you can you can get him. Uh, they asking me where are we on Spotify, Microsoft, or Facebook? MySpace, no. Spotify, MySpace. Spotify, MySpace, MySpace, yeah, Sp Butterfly, MySpace. Then what? Um, YouTube, YouTube, and what else we got? Twitter, <laughs> Twitter. I will on YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> what else, Mike? Come on. Uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, go and Instagram. All right, go let's on. go. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to the Serial Audio Experience with IFTV, a nice little Champions League podcast with the boys. Yeah. As uh, Peter's not here anymore, he was. So Why did you put this guy in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm better looking. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But you, because you, you, you always throw something at Peter. So you're going to fight with him so you could throw something at him. All right. Good. Right? So basically Peter is at, was actually at the Atalanta game. He was yeah. he was uh he was, he was in, in Milano. San Siro. Yeah. yeah. San Siro. Listen, wow. I told I wrote in the group I said Peter penalty bring them some luck. Yeah. Listen, they got their first point in Champions League history, history. when Peter and was there. Against oh, Manchester wow. City. Against Man City. Yeah. So, guess what? Who predicted speak, the tie? Speaking to the thing. Who predicted the tie? Oh, wait, who did? I, I well, predicted no. too. Yeah, you did. No, you did not. I don't think you predicted the tie. I did. I did you? Tie. Go back. But I put my head down when I said a tie because yeah, yeah, I was yeah, a little... Okay. He, oh, you did say I tie? Did. We both said really? I said tie I also. did. Yeah. The thing about this game was yeah, that it that. left us... No, I definitely didn't Shame say tie. Shame on both of you guys. Um. The yeah, but how, you want to go back and check how many wrong ones that you guys both it's have? It's about that. It's the optimism. <laughs> Stick with the script. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, unlike you, I don't got a script. I know you got no, those. I don't have uh, a script. I just have a rant that I, I need rant. to follow. The, follow the the the, the Is sequence. that coming later? Why? That's coming later it's on. Coming later. Okay. Yeah. okay. Very good. We'll, we'll, it we'll, may may not. So it all depends which <laughs> which topic uh, you're gonna we're gonna introduce. Okay. So oh, it's up the, to you. I I have a feeling I know what the rant is gonna be about. Um, it's gonna be about your best friend, uh, Peter's best friend. So uh, anyway, let's talk about the Atalanta game. Like you guys predicted a, a tie, That's which right. before the match I think we would have all said how incredible a tie against Manchester City would be, even though it's still they still could have been out with a tie. But for way the, for the way the game ended, we're a little bit bitter because I thought that Atalanta could have gotten um, a win. Antonio, you didn't you didn't see the match, so I'll explain it to you. Uh, just like I'm, I'll explain to anybody who didn't see um, the game. First half, Atalanta was not there. They weren't even present. Um, and Man City was up 1-0. They also had a penalty kick, which they missed. Uh, so we got lucky. They missed or was saved? By no, you. missed. Oh, missed. They missed the Outside net. Gabriel Atlanta. Jesus, I think it was. Uh, second half, though, Atalanta came out to play. They really, they started, you know, even we were watching the game and we're like, this is bad. But second half, they came out to play. Um, they had a lot of good chances. They ended up scoring. Pasalic scored uh, finally, and they, they did 1-1. And then what's crazy about this game is in the 80th minute or 82nd minute, their uh, goalkeeper, Claudio Bravo, came out, tackled Ilicic on a through ball, a one-on-one, -on -one, got a red card, and their initial goalkeeper, Ederson, already got subbed out because he was hurt. Bravo was the backup who got subbed into the match. They had to put a field player inside net. So they put Kyle Walker, who's a, a defender. defender. The guy's shorter than Michael <laughs> yeah. in net. So he it's wouldn't true. he wouldn't have been able to, to even touch the roof. So they had what should have been 10 minutes of time to be able to shoot on him. The fr first free kick they took, by the way, it was ridiculous. They, they took a, a low shot when you got to shoot high on the guy. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't do anything. Else. They didn't test him at all. They had seven minutes of extra time, which should have been more, but they didn't take a shot. They couldn't even you know, build possession. I really thought if Papu Gomez, Ilicic would have gotten one single shot, they would have scored. Yeah. And the other thing shame. was Gasparini didn't put Muriel in until like the 92nd minute when they needed a goal. Uh, you need to win a game. You got to put Muriel before. I mean, the guy is scoring right now. He's been scoring. But I, I got some criticism for um, 
for Ilic. They were to, he had two, two one-on-one with the goalkeeper. One is probably going to be a 50-50 and he shy away. So when the ball, he was about to go and he saw that it was 50-50, he went back yeah. and uh, he didn't take the ball and he was criticized for that. And on the um, as, on the um, one-on-one with the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper came out of the area and he definitely dragged his leg so that he would hit the part of the body. I think he hit his head yeah, of the goalkeeper so that the goalkeeper would have gone out. And some of the criticism from top, top professional players was, hey, go around the goalkeeper. Or jump him, right? Or jump yeah. him. And then you you have an open net. And, and, you know, you you, you win the game. So I, I, I looked at it and I agree. He could have uh, gone over, or he, even if he lift his leg, he would have gone, and he would have scored the goal instead of dragging his foot and um, hitting um, the the goalkeeper. On the super slow mo, you actually see Ilicic extends his leg to get hit. Yeah, he moves. Claudio Bravo was not going to touch him, and yeah. Ilicic instead of going around him, and he didn't even need to really go around him. He just not needed to not put his foot to hit Bravo. So right. Bra- they even checked VAR on it. Somehow VAR didn't see that he. You know, cheated a little bit where he put his his you so know, what happened his like to hit him. That play, what happened, uh, what so Bravo happened? got a red card. So the goalkeeper got a red card, but it, but it they could have scored a... because it was an open net. Oh. Is the is the criticism, um, which I agree with you. And I saw the fifty fifty, and even yeah. Ilicic gave out the yeah, penalty show, kick show with the uh, with the uh, hand. Yeah, show me just, just this play. That, that, that Thanos did. But I think that there was a lack of experience, like obviously that Atalanta have and Manchester City have. They wasted seven minutes of that extra time. Manchester City completely wasted it. You know, the way that they tactically, you know, let this, you know, they go into a corner, they make sure that they get a second corner, they play it short, they waste time on the throw-ins. Like that's a team that's been in this situation before and knows how to waste. Seven minutes is a long time to waste. And Atalanta couldn't even keep possession. And then when Atalanta got possession of the ball, they were sending the ball in a few times when you got to keep it on the ground so that you could test the right, keeper. Right. So that was what I was really more so disappointed with. In the long haul, this is what's crazy about this is that 1-1, um, the other game in their group, Dinamo against Shakhtar, they needed that game to end in a tie. If one play, If one team won, they were out unless they won. So... In that game, Michael and I were checking it. In the 90th minute, it was 3-1 for Dinamo. That's it. Atalanta's out. So we stopped checking the game. We left it in the back. We said 3-1. The game's over. You blame us? 3-1. <laughs> yeah. 92nd minute, 93rd. Shakhtar scored 3-2. 98th minute, Shakhtar get a penalty kick and score 3-3. 3-3. It saved Atalanta. And we had no clue. We had no clue we, that it Our that Instagram it was, caption was, was Atalanta got eliminated. Other than a few you guys commented. Other than we checked the other game. Because the game wasn't over yet. Yeah, the game. And we're like, yo, Marco, it went 3-3. And I was like, well, they're not eliminated. So we couldn't saved, believe it. There's a tiny bit of hope. Um, for Atalanta, yeah. and what they need to do to qualify... To win both games? They need to win both games, and Manchester City cannot lose to Dinamo or Shakhtar. Which isn't impossible, but very tough. Very yeah. Tough. Uh, what they're going to be facing? Then? Atlanta, Dinamo Shakhtar, and Shakhtar. Oh, they can win. They Atlanta's can win. got one point, and then Shakhtar and Dinamo got five points. They, they got Man City out the toughest yeah, but, game. But yeah, they have to play Man City uh, yeah. They play one games, home so and one away. If, uh, With Man City already yeah, If Atlanta wins yeah. uh, both games... You know, they go to seven, but uh, very, very... It's tough, but it's impossible. Never many say points, never. How many never points does never. Man City have? Ten points. So they're not automatically qualified yet, but they will be after the next match. Even they need a tie, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah all right. they need is a they tie. All they need is a tie. So yeah. the motivation for them to... I mean, Man City is going to win. I don't think they're going to play for a tie. I mean, Man City always... Uh, they're going to win the, both games? The mentality is to, to you yeah, know, I to play for a win. Games, I don't honest. think they're going to win both games. So uh, on this on this game, I liked uh, what uh, Papo uh, Gomez. Gomez said after the game, and also <coughs> was agreed by Fabio Capello. The question was, what's the difference between Serie A and the Champions League? And Papo said, first of all, in Champions they press you from the beginning, something that does not always happen or does not happen with Serie A. Also. The passing is much faster. And the thinking, very important. This is very important. The thinking is much faster. So mm. if in Serie A you already know where the ball is going to go before you get it, here 
you are pressed. So somebody's pressing you, and now you have to make the pass before, as soon as you get it. Maybe in Serie A, you'll have one second to think about I'll it. Maybe a here, a fraction. you know, it's less. So more because mistakes. The, yeah, so more mistakes. And of course, by uh, by pressing and by um, and by making this faster passes, you have to have technique. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the technique, you won't be able to get out of the area. Some teams that, that never get out of the uh, their own half because they can, you know, the other team is much better. They press and you can get out. And I thought um, it was a good uh, analysis by uh, by Pablo mm -hmm. Comos. Between the Serie A and champions. The only good thing, Michael and I were talking about how they still really could have that Europa League qualification if they don't go in. And mm -hmm. I, like I told Michael, I was like, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. You don't know Europa League, I don't really value. The only good thing about that is that they could gain experience where in a match like this, the experience really proves. Like True. to allow Man City to waste seven minutes mm -hmm. and not being able to take a single shot on a goalkeeper who's not a goalkeeper isn't good, isn't good enough. But listen, there's hope. Um, if we would have told you before to have a tie against Manchester City is their first point ever, I think we would have all For gladly sure. said that that's incredible. So Peter Penalty brought them some luck. Mm -hmm. We didn't get the penalty. Hey, by the way, on. we have the Derusha over here, so thanks to Renata, right? Ricardo. 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 Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Ricardo, don't worry. We're still pressing that, uh, you know, you guys are going to make it. I have just a very good feeling that you're going to yeah? make it. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah, for some reasons, I, I smell it. They're going to make it. I, you're you're giving me more faith. Yeah, me too. I wasn't believing, and now nah, maybe I'm believing. They're going to make it. More. They're going to make it. Yeah. Good. Uh, let's talk about before we go to the Tuesday games. Let's finish off with this Juventus against Lokomotiv. Um, another embarrassing match from from Juve that was destined for a tie. And I was getting ready to say all the things I wanted to say, but of course Juve somehow with um well not somehow I think to me and with their incredible technical players they buys them out of every match that's about to end in a tie and the skill from Douglas Costa in the 92nd incredible. minute as a sub um, who was already man of the match he came in in the 70th minute and he was by far the best that player of the night that was a YouTube video clip right there that um, was so good. world class from Costa who's been missed for Juve and he bails Sadi out because by God that looked like uh, we, we had a caption ready in case they oh, yeah, uh, you guys want to understand caption. this, but the, our viewers will. Marco say Marco we had, thought of this. We had one. said, was this Juventus or was this Piemonte Calcio? <laughs> and, you want to um, understand it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you know, I saw the goal. It. I saw the goal. The goalkeeper like like he opened his legs like it was a battery tunnel. Was a <laughs> Come on, what the hell is well, that? It, he had nothing else to do. You can't yeah, but I think either way he would have finished it. Not the uh, not the. Uh, the goal you're talking about the first goal when no, he no, went no, 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 between no, no. the goals. He's one on one. What are you talking yeah. about? He's one on one yeah. with the five yards That's from the goal. Saying, well, you want to stop him? You can't stop it. A subway car. A subway car. Anyway, it was a nice pass. Subways you take. It was a nice pass by Iguain, which he make it with the heel. The the thing about Juventus is one of these days he's gonna. If they don't play good soccer, the luck's it, gonna run out. Yeah, the luck is gonna run out, and, and and might run out in Champions League, and when it's a direct elimination, you know, and then you uh, you're gonna have problems because uh, they already qualified yeah. for the second round, right. but the second round then it's a direct. So I'm afraid that they, if they don't improve, sure. uh, they uh, they're gonna run into a problem. Mm. It seems like Juventus always do this kind of thing though to start the season at least, but. Today was really weird this because, you know, we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, this Sadi ball and the, all this stuff and the tactics. Number one, he put Rugani in the match over Demiral to start the match. Rugani, I'm, I say this confidently, Rugani could not go play with you guys. You're Brooklyn Italians. You're over 50. He mm -hmm. could not play with you guys. He's that bad. Hey, don't he put honest, us down. What are you talking about? <laughs> the Brooklyn Italians is one of the top team. The guy, the guy honestly can't make a pass. He doesn't make a challenge. He doesn't make a pass. He was abysmal. On the, on the goal that they scored... He's, he was him and Bonucci, so I don't know what they're doing. Um, and then, uh, you know, he also, they, every the whole Saudi ball, I mean, for now, at least in this match, and I know playing in Russia is difficult and a lot of teams struggle, but it's all lateral passes. They're passing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth without doing anything. And like I said last week, Ronaldo is completely isolated. I don't know if it's the tactics that's making Ronaldo isolated or age is coming up or he's just in a bad moment. But only for the third time in his career, he got subbed out today. Sadi took him out. Third time in Ronaldo's career. Ooh. Sadi, after the match, said that he had a little problem and he didn't want to risk it. Um, but he ended up putting Dybala in, which to me, he put Dybala in too late. Um, and I was a little bit annoyed that he didn't take out Iguain, who Iguain didn't do anything, but he ended up getting the assist to 
Was it was it you that that said it uh, that when they asked Sari a question, would you rather play bad and win the game or play good and lose the game? Yeah, wow. and and he had said that he would rather play good. Yeah, right? he's again. always said that in the past. Right, always. Uh, I past. would like to ask him that question now. He's playing, <laughs> he's playing so bad yeah. and he's he's winning games. This you know, was this was completely saying, though. You kept saying about this uh, the Sarri system. What? Yeah, he didn't invent it. Well, anything. it's not the Sarri okay, system. Okay, something something. he didn't invent it. With no, the question. No, though. this is BS, guys. This is a bunch of BS. Sarri did not invent anything. We know that. Well, we we, know we that. didn't say the that. wheel okay. was already invented. All he's doing is trying to plug some of his players that they will fit within his system. That his system. I don't even know if it's an hybrid between Saki and somebody else. He didn't invent anything. Same okay. way Conte. Conte did not invent anything. Okay, the 352, okay. again, it was Gasperini that put the, the 352 on the table. Okay, but still, he they're not playing. The, but but even Juventus, I mean, I, like we've said, the midfield, I mean, Rabiot and those players, they're horrible. They're, they're so bad that it's embarrassing. Juventus' midfield is just, they can't possess a game. Um, and locomotive at, at a point when it was one one, and you see this is the problem because when you win two one, now you get all excited. You start thinking about Costa. You start thinking about how he came back. You're thinking about the win, three points, qualification. Where all the thoughts when it was one one, I was just thinking about how at one one, Juventus had zero energy, and I'm happy it's coming back to me now. They had zero energy or urgency to score. They looked like they were up three zero at one one. They were playing the game like it was three zero. And they were fine. And there was no substitution. The first sub he made was Bentancur in the midfield. But again, you get the win and everything gets washed under the table. And exactly. you're like, which is, it's always important to win. But to me, they're winning more off of more off of having incredible players, game changers who could come off the bench and really do something. And also shout out to Douglas Costa because he had a tough time with injuries. And coming in, he's such a spark. He played in a new role. I know you guys didn't see this game, but he played as an attacking midfielder. He's not playing on the left. So he said after the match that it's something that he's played in the past and that he likes, but it's going to take some time for him to adapt. Uh, but he did he did really really well today, and he's he's such a technically gifted player that but that on, he could change a match. On like the four three three, what did he play? No, they did four three one two. So he went in for Ramsey, who was playing behind the strikers. So okay. he played so he behind played the one. Yeah, he played behind DiBala and he played behind uh, Iguain. Iguain because oh, he took Ronaldo, Ronaldo out. Ronaldo. But um, but yeah, I I don't really have much to say actually. There's one other crazy stat. Um, Sadi, he ties an all-time record. Um, third best coach for oh, unbeaten holy. streak in Europe. So he tied Van Hal on a 20 straight unbeaten streak in all of Europe's competitions. First is Sir Alex Ferguson with 25 games. Second is uh, Ericsson with 23 games. And then third tied is Louis Van Hal and Mauricio Sadi with 20. But of course, that's counting Europa League. Nobody yeah. cares. <laughs> Um and uh, that's it. Yeah, I, I got nothing else to say. It's a recycled of what I've been saying about you over the past this whole season. We forgot the funniest storyline though. Well, Ronaldo finally took a free kick that didn't hit the wall, oh, and yeah. Ramsey stole the goal from him. He Ooh, he, right. he just Ooh. tapped it over the oh, line. Was not over the line. No, it wasn't over the by line. By this by this much, <laughs> like a fraction of. Uh, I can only imagine how mad Ronaldo was. R it would have. Ronaldo's gonna get Ramsey injured. <laughs> it also would have been. He would have broken a record to be thirty to score against thirty four teams oh, in Champions right. League to tie yeah, Messi. Yeah. They never. He never scored. Against locomotive Guess Moscow. Guess what? Nobody's gonna lose sleep over this. Who cares about Ramsey Ronaldo? Is. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> After all his injuries. <laughs> but yeah, the the Ronaldo's first time that he got a, a shot on target and a free kick in a long time. But the goalkeeper completely gave it to them. That was hard. I mean, the goalkeeper. Yeah. So let's like, uh, let's let's move on. Let's, let's move go on. to the so. best game of let's yesterday. Be let's be honest. Okay. <laughs> Don't game? be mean, Anto. Oh, what do you mean mean? I, this is the, what the, the, most of the uh, stuff is. I, I just mean. realized what he's talking and talking yeah. about. Okay, first of all, before we even get to the inter, uh, uh, what was Dorman. It? inter game, the, yeah, Borussia, I I was scrolling through whatever Gaetano sent me over the Gazzetta, the Corriere, and I ran into this article where De Laurentiis technically was ranting about this bar, saying that technically, I think De Laurentiis. To his credit, though, I think he's watching uh, the, our podcast <laughs> because uh, all he did, he was repeating what some, one of us over here said. Which that one? That he should not have, we should not yeah. have, I don't know what. we should not have anybody refing a, an Italian uh, championship game no, he says every podcast, at the Serie A. We should not have any referees involved in the Serie A that they are from Italy and even at the VAR. So we should have all Greek refs, foreigners, <laughs> all foreigners. <laughs> 
just behind the bar and just ref in the Italian game. So you the, think so the you, campionato? You think that you're the first one that thought of it, and he must have heard it from here because it's not what, possible to think of anything. Else. What are you talking about? It. We, I'm asking. I it think, was, I think just, he it was to the him. day before. It was the day before that we said. You're right. It was the day we before. said it. Maybe I said it. But anyway, I thought Peter said it. No, I did. But anyway, <laughs> this is the this is the bottom line. Is yeah. this? What's the bottom line? Everybody, it's criticizing this VAR because the VAR, instead of bringing more clarity, is creating more trouble. Nobody still understands the, the rules of this penalty uh -huh. or no penalty and all the stuff. And everybody's got a different interpretation. And again, I think one of the factors could be that there is some bias among the people that they are watching the videos and the people refing the game. So again, none of them, none of the guys on the field, on the grass, should make in the final decision. Let's let, let's go okay. to now. Let's, let's talk go. about Napoli then. Since since you brought up De Laurentiis, yeah. we'll save your. I know you have a lot of a big rant for Inter, so yeah. we'll save that up. Let's go to Napoli. for Napoli. Since you talked about De Laurentiis, um, recap of the match. They tied um, Salzburg, Red Bull Salzburg, one one. Um, by the way, the first twelve minutes of that match, Napoli should have could have had four goals easily, four easy goals, and they ended up being down one zero. Koulibaly drew a penalty kick. That guy Holland. For um for Red Bull, 19 guy, years old. That guy's a monster. He's he got, so many goals. I have it written down somewhere, seven goals in four Champions League matches. He's 19. Good. It's ridiculous. Um, everybody everybody wants him. You guys going to get it. I don't know. A lot of teams want him. A lot of big teams want him. Uh, Napoli is supposed to be so defensively sound the, the entire Lassi, year. Manolas didn't start. Yeah, he's injured. Last minute, I mean, they took him out. I don't Manolas. know. I, don't, don't I didn't hear Manolas anything. Maybe something he's not happened. injured? I, I didn't hear anything. Oh, my God. Manolas. So maybe something, had, maybe something with Ancelotti well, and well, A lot of stuff has been happening he, for Napoli. Manolas was in the press conference to talk, and they usually start wherever's in the press conference. Other than they took him out last... Last second, they pulled Maximovic, yeah. and I was like, "Wait, what happened?" Napoli ended up getting into this, back into the match. Um, Chucky Lozano, he scored a beautiful goal. His first, a, a first goal for League Napoli goal. too. Yeah. Um, so it was a great job by him. Um, the thing is, in the second half, not not too much happened for Napoli. They didn't have any real chances. They were, they had one chance that that Insigne. It was almost an own goal um, for them in their favor. But there was no real urgency, and the one-one kind of just came about. Red Bull Salzburg, in my opinion, didn't do much. And um, the crazy part, they were playing in Naples. This is a game that we thought for sure they were going to win. And the crazy part is that this wasn't even the drama that happened. All the drama came afterwards. Um, you guys got a comment on the game before on the tactical analysis, or no, no, I didn't get to watch yeah, it, so that's no, why I, uh, didn't, I didn't watch it. But uh, with a win. You said in the first half they missed four goals. With a win, Napoli is in. They, yeah, they did. You know, they they, did they in, and this type of games you you need to win. I know that there has been something going back and forth with De Laurentiis and with Ancelotti. I hope I'm hoping that Ancelotti stays and say yeah because um, he's a, he's a great coach. So I like him. So I'll explain what happened after the match. Um, as we know, Napoli, they're supposed to be in Ritiro, which is like training camp retreat, um, where basically, you know, you stay at the training ground that you're working at, that you're training at. You sleep there. You know, yeah. you don't go you back don't go home, home after training. You yeah. stay there. They were supposed to be in it until, I think, Saturday or Sunday. Um, and this was a decision made by De Laurentiis. This all came out before. And Ancelotti actually said before their last game that he was not in favor of this. He said, I don't want the team to go into this training retreat um, and De Laurentiis forced the team, or the club forced the team to do this. So after the match, um, apparently Ancelotti, or the players, there's rumors that De, that Insigne said to De Laurentiis' son, we're not, we're going home. We're not going to your training Tell camp. Tell to your father, right? There's also some rumors that Ancelotti told the players, listen, you don't have to go to the retreat, just go home. And obviously that started a big problem because now the coach, the players, and the club all have disagreements on what's been happening. The players obviously went home. They didn't go into the training retreat, which De Laurentiis was um, upset about. Um, and the rumors, uh, the, the club made a statement afterwards um, where they said that they could be taking action against the players and coach. Like what, did that salary it or could things be, like that? It could be fines. It could be salaries. Suspensions some some directors those. and sporting directors were saying even up to 5% of their salaries could get docked for something like this. Um, there's then there were rumors from uh, from Gazette that were saying that Ancelotti could even resign after all this, but then it seems like those kind of died down and that he was not going to resign or not get fired. Ancelotti is not that kind of person, believe me. It's just uh, Ancelotti. Let's let's 
But there's big issues in in Napoli for oh. for this because and they said the players are calling their lawyers so that if they get fines, they don't want to have to pay their fines. So it's a big issue. What started out as you know a simple problem or a disagreement between them. Anyway, I think they, it's deeper than that, Marco. In, because in, you know, in, you know, for something like this, number one, Napoli hasn't been eliminated from the Champions League, right? They're still on, yeah, right? But so they're mad about the past results too in yeah. Serie A. So That's how it started. That's with the what results. I'm saying. So it's deeper than what happened yesterday. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, but it started with the game from Serie A. Yeah, exactly. De Laurenti mm-hmm. said that he he felt like the team only concentrated in a big match. He said against oh, Liverpool. That's something I said too. He Maybe said, he's watching the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, you guys are saying very obvious stuff. He said that against Liverpool, when we played Liverpool, there was a great concentration throughout the whole match. He goes, but when we play Sassuolo, or we play whoever, yeah. there's a lack of concentration. So he was trying to do the retreat to try to fix that. <coughs> what do you think? Excuse me. No, De La Rentes has got to do your president. You're a president, do your, your job as a president. Let Ancelotti run the team. Wow. Pagatano, De Laurentiis is, I the, agree one, with is that. the one signing the check. Okay, when you sign in the uh, check and you're telling your coach... You you sign, signing the, you're signing a check for the coach to do his job. That's yeah, what you're saying. You're not a coach. Well, and let, the coach, the second highest let, the coach coach. let the coach do his job. But I'm, I'm saying to you, if he signs the check of the coach and he is demanding from the coach to bring, to bring the player into the camp and just, uh, you know... Just to get the coach. But I mean, how does the De Laurentiis team, know the that that's the focus. best thing? Don't you think Ancelotti, you have so much experience, would know better? Like, their treat is not a positive thing. My players don't want to do it. Well, I, like no? Gaetano said, he said, okay, instead of just let it be a discussion between him and, and Ancelotti and then found a, found a common solution. So they went up now said, okay, you said this, I say that, you demand this. I said to the player, I dismissed the player. Is I told them basically, do not yeah. go to the to the yeah, retreat. Exactly. So the bottom line is, it's a lot of deeper than that. I think Insigne is on a collision course with the with Definitely. the ownership. It's a couple or other with players, Ancelotti. yes, yeah. or with Ancelotti or both of them. It's a lot going on, so we will never going to know. They're not those guys. They're not like the inter uh, uh, lockers room that now everything is coming out. Well, so all this is, got out. Well, Public, it got publicly, out, but we don't know exactly what was the reasons. Yeah, but I, I think it's very strange that Ancelotti, in his interview, he says before the game, I didn't want to do this retreat, but De Laurentiis forced us to. No, you guys got to be on the same line. Uh, exactly. You got to say, oh, we, we made this decision. We made it. No, not this guy. The president doesn't want it. I don't. I want it. Like that, you it have looks, to have. You look all over the place and unorganized. It looks bad. And, but right. we did we did bring up question mark, which a lot of Napoli fans have been bringing up, where Ancelotti's um, lack of tactics or lack of, you know, this is all fun and games, right? You're playing training retreat, all that kind of stuff is off the field. But the reality is they're not getting the results on the field. And it's why are they not getting these results on the field is the question. Is Ancelotti at fault for that? Is it a slump? It, what is it? Is it lack of tactics? Is it what what is happening that Napoli can't get these wins? That's a problem. Lack of concentration yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Unmotivated. But unmotivated there's an underlying team, theme of is Ancelotti, you know, a problem for this Napoli? That, I uh, think that's what the past podcast we were asking we're the same thing, which is which is the main problem. That's something Ancelotti has to figure out. But I, I agree with De Laurentiis, uh, where in the big match, he plays good, and they lose concentration like to the smaller yeah, ones. 100%. And it's it's not just a one time thing. It's you know Reoccurring how many points uh, they're in seventh place, place in the Serie. A. This is the second year of Ancelotti. I said that I don't want to be redundant, but uh, At least but one person. but at the end of the day, they gotta be organized. The Laurentiis and Ancelotti gotta be on the same page when they leave their office and be like, okay, we agree. That we got to do this you now. Know. One person said this, and one person said the other. How then something slips in the media, and now there's a hundred things going on, and everyone wants you something. You know, Mike. You know, you you just got something. Just <laughs> oh boy, something connected in your An brain. An idea, uh, light like right bulb pop. If you, if we in Serie A, we starting to tie the salary of those guys that they are on the grass to their performance and to their final <laughs> oh, results. Man. You're going to start to see a lot Me, of those. Milan players would never get paid. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. You're paid starting to tie <laughs> the salary of some of those superstars, quote unquote, to what they've actually put it on the, on, uh, on the field, then you're going to start to see a lot more of a... Or you say, okay, this is your basic salary, and those are all the incentives. They if, have bonuses. They have performance-related bonuses. Yeah, yeah but uh, you, I will reduce a lot more their basic salary. And I said, and I will put a lot more weight on into their bonuses. <laughs> If, to their, if you have a contract, nobody wants to reduce. But as soon as you play a few good games, they all want to raise. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. Sus Susu's gonna have to come over here and print some shirts to make some <laughs> extra cash. <laughs> They're not gonna make anything. Um, uh, for Napoli, by the way, much, too much money, too much money. And you know what? To the, I gave a great point. I think for me, I'm on the La Laurenti side. I'm sorry for Ancelotti, but hey, you're the boss, okay? You are the one cutting the salary, cutting the check, okay? When I'm writing the check for everybody, whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, you guys have to do whatever I'm telling you. This is the way. A for profit. This is not a, a in business. A in business in terms, business. yeah, but not in tactical terms. But they they, they say a, that they say that De Laurentiis went into the into the locker room at first half. For me, you don't belong there. That, if you're giving them yeah, tactical I'm analysis not, of where this guy needs I to agree play, with you. no. And this Ancelotti is not no. a small coach. Ancelotti, you know, won everything. How are you gonna Let tell me him? Yes, something? Paisa. Almost everything. Berlusconi used to go on exactly. the locker room exactly. a lot. That, it started the downfall when he would tell people in Zaghi, speak up. Remember that video? He's like, come on, say it with your chest. That started getting embarrassing. Yeah, that viral video. Let, let, by, like Antonio said, Napoli are not out to qualify for the Listen, Champions League. If you want to give some uh, advice to the coach, you can do it privately. You know, you get the, the director uh, and uh, the director, the president, I'm sure that they talk on a, on a daily basis and you... You give him a wife, but not uh, not like that. Not like that. It looks That's just it a looks humiliating, bad. right? Yeah, humiliating, that yeah. looks bad. It looks so very bad. For Napoli to qualify for the next round of Champions League, um, they need a win versus Liverpool or versus uh, Jank Gank, mm -hmm. um, or they could tie Liverpool and Jank, or Salzburg um, does not beat Jank. So they're just still, win. It still Napoli. looks good. It still looks good. <laughs> no, for it looks Napoli. very good for Napoli. Yeah. Yeah. But then, 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 it's the underlying problems exactly, which are the exactly. issue. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, it looks very good. Okay, where it doesn't look good is the last uh, Italian game that we had, which I never, at halftime, if you told me that we were going to be saying all this happened, I would never believe it. Um, Inter blew a 2-0 lead where they were up at halftime, 2-0 against Dortmund in Germany, and Dortmund came back 3-2 and ended up winning the game. Uh, <laughs> Pete, send the, play, play Pete's uh, voice message. What did he say? Oh, what he oh, sent? What he, what he sent to wow. us? Um, you know, <laughs> who was it that uh, scored? Lautaro Martinez did really brilliant on the first goal. Yeah. Mm. Took advantage of a mistake from Dorman in defense. Um, even could have passed it to Lukaku. And Lukaku, you know, he's, he had so, so much confidence that he didn't. And also, by the way, for Lukaku, I really like that. He's got a really good attitude about him. I see Lukaku. He plays for the team a lot. One second, one second. Okay. And then Vecino scored the second goal. Again, really early. We're made it 2-0. But then again, this is Pete's reaction um, at halftime. This is the voice message that we received. No, not uh, after time. the match. Yeah, after, after the, the match. match. Yeah. So Peter only saw when it was 2 0, and then he turned on his phone for the full time thing. Peter sent us his voice message on WhatsApp. What the fuck just happened? I can't, uh, can't watch the game over here. Yeah, that's what happened. Oh. That's what happened. Can you imagine? Can you imagine uh, you see 2 0? 2 0, and like, okay, go, I'm going to go on my plane. Oh, then you. Check back full time and you see three two. You know what's even worse? You know what's even crazier is that this is after Barca tied um, Slavia Praha. Who did they play? Yeah, Slavia, Slavia Praha. Praha. Yeah. So it was such a great opportunity for Inter to yeah, get this win. Exactly. But what that the it went it was like this. It's like you're driving on the highway. Your gas tank says full. You're going full. You're going full. You're going full. All of a sudden, boom, straight to empty. And you're like, where's that whole middle ground? It was yeah, a game of it's, two halves. Uh, it's, a, it's very strange uh, result because usually a contest team, uh, he doesn't let them fall asleep. You know, he, he always has them on the toes and he's on the sidelines screaming and yelling like a madman and he tried to keep everybody, you know, really focused on the game. So I knew the score at halftime was to nothing and I thought uh, that he was going to get, a, you know, he was going to get a positive score, which would have, it would have been oh, a very, very good to go into the next round. Now things uh, become more difficult. The other thing that I wanted to say, and going back to you, Mike, is that after the game, he was also contradicting with the management mm. yep. in a, in, wow. in, in, in a, yeah. in a oh certain boy. way, right? Mm. Which Not was, the first time that we've seen Conte doing that. You know, because he said, I'll leave yep. the, the management to answer this. You know, in other words, he doesn't have enough players. Uh, with this team, he cannot play the Champions League and the Serie A. He made him understood that he needs more players mm. in order to, to be competitive in both. Um, I'll, 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 we'll, so. we'll, we'll explain that part, but let's talk about the tactical at least first. Like, okay. like we do with Napoli. We talk first about the game half, first. They played, they played amazing. Second half, it was a tale of two halves, just like the Barcelona game. 
I, I don't even know what else to say. They play for, for 45, 60 minutes. And then the well, rest... Handanovic saved them on counts of times in the first and second them. half. Yeah. But Inter's defense is a disaster. Wait a moment. It's Isn't still... this the call of the wall? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say Wait, that. What do we have? They have Godin... It was, it was De Godin, Vrij, De Vrij, and Skriniar. And De Vrij, and De Vrij. So yep. three of the best defenders on the paper, again, on the paper. Three of the best defenders, like Manolas, Koulibaly. Who's the other th th the third best in the Napoli? What is it? Who That's is it? it, just them two. No, it's not just them. Oh, yeah, just no, them no. two. Right, so I understand what you're saying, yes. This is the point. Conte, I think it's time for you, if you're watching this podcast, to wear a big boy pants and to grow a pair of big soccer balls. <laughs> I'm sure he's a great man, a family man, but when it comes down to not taking responsibility for what happened, yeah. he's very bad. So this has happened not now. This has happened on Juventus. He demanded time, from yeah. Juventus and Marotta when he was over there, his buddy, to get his, the player that he wanted on the list. Okay, he gives the list of things to do for the big guys. So if he doesn't get what he wants, he's got somebody to blame to. This guy, this guy knows how to. Actually, I saw some of the highlight yesterday when I went back home because I was so depressed when I found out that they lost three two. So I went, I put up, I put the game on. So <laughs> I went to put, the, I put the game on, and I saw that Inter collapsed, totally collapsed at, on the second half. They could have scored six or seven goals. And uh, nobody will have said they will so take anything away from Borussia. Look, Mario Gotze, oh, unbelievable. This guy was possessed yesterday. And I'm not sure it was not just yesterday. They were not prepared on the second half. And if you watch Conte attitude, Gatano, the first two goals, he was jumping out of his skin. It's like he scored himself. If you see the way he was celebrating, all, oh, of, a sudden, all of a sudden, Inter goes down. 2-1, two, 2-2, one, two, two. They they're going down to the game. And all, all of his attitude changes, which is normal. But... But Gaetano said at the end of the game, starting to put all the blame on the management side, that's really bad. Before we get into that, I have <clears throat> some tactical stuff. Because right. like you did, I watched the game again. Um, I mean, I watched the highlights again. And I was looking in the 50th minute on the first goal that they concede. I went back and I, you see the screenshot and I'll show you guys. There's three Dortmund players inside Inter's box. And there are one, two, oh, three, man. four, five, six, seven, eight Inter defenders plus Handanovic. There are nine players, nine Inter defenders in the box versus three dormant, and they somehow score a goal. De Vrij and Godin are not marking anybody, and I'll show you this, right? Look, you could see. I mean, there is no way in hell that you can allow these guys to score this on this whistle, one. Right? This is um, yeah. Probably. Yeah. That's pretty good eyes. Um, on the second goal, I took, again, another screenshot. I don't have the minute here, but whatever. You could look up what minute it was. It was an Inter throw-in. Candreva has the ball. There's four dormant attackers in the screen right now. And again, nine Inter players. With your possession, a throw-in in Inter's half. And Brozovic, lack of concentration, doesn't go straight to the ball. Maybe Candreva shouldn't have given it to him. And De Vrij doesn't close down eventually. But again, it's 4v9. And you have the ball. How how do you defensively? This is where the play was. It's Inter's ball, and they somehow concede on this one. I mean, I don't know what the Inter defenders were doing on this one. Let me see if I if there's anything on the third goal. Again, on the third goal, um, I, I wrote that Sensi and Brozovic didn't win the ball back, and Kandreva didn't follow his man, and Skriniar doesn't step up quick enough. This one was a little bit. This was tougher, but again, I think that this guy dribbled past um, Sensi and, and Brozovic. And they let allowed him to go. It was a one-two, I think. And Skriniar didn't yeah. really step. But that was bad. That was bad. You know, I, I heard some of those uh, post-game uh, post, uh, interviews and uh, did the ranting about this guy here. He says, well, listen, uh, but uh, you've been given players like Sensi, like Barella, Lukaku. like uh, Lukaku, and all of those players. Uh, and now, uh, all of a sudden, those players, they're not good enough for Inter said but Sensi and Barella they didn't win anything they don't have international experience what does that mean those are Italian national team players this is the this is the the, the spine of the Italian national team are you telling me they're not good enough to play on your on your scheme that's a ridiculous stupid nonsense so no, I but think that's not what he said I have I have the full yeah, quote let me just read it just yeah. read let it. me read it just read it um he said that we're talking about a group of players who apart from Godin haven't won anything. Who am I supposed to call on? Nicolo Barella, who we signed from Cagliari, 
or Stefano Sensi, who arrived from Sassuolo, and he followed that up by saying that, you know, I respect my guys. They always give their heart and soul, but let's be real. He also, just to conclude yeah, everything was, that he it, said. It's depressing. If I were the, one of those two players, I would be depressed. I said, what, what am I doing playing for this asshole here? When, let me finish. He said, I also thank the players for giving their heart and soul. I know that what I ask for is, is strain, uh, and sometimes it's difficult to deal with. But more than anything, there are limits to competing in the league and Champions League in terms of having a bench. Playing games with the same players, eventually you're going to pay for something. All of us made a big mistake when planning for this season. I'm annoyed at saying the same thing over and over again. What do you mean all of us? I mean himself all, too? All that, they're saying Marotta, Auxilio, everybody. And himself too? Yes, hope. and himself okay. too. All right. He did say himself too. Um, he said maybe a director could come over here once and talk about the situation. He said we're in an emergency situation with only three players injured. Whereas other teams have injuries and you don't even notice. But with us, you do notice. You can't go beyond certain points. And that's why I'm pissed. That's uh, those that needed to understand, understood. Okay, so I just want to... So I, there are two things. Uh, there are two yeah. things. Uh, go ahead, Mike. No, no, go, go, go ahead. Go. I'll say after. Go. There are two things. One is talking about experience. Okay. And the other one, he wants more players. Which was wow. the criticism... That um, that he he wants more. He's got. He's saying he's got nobody on the bench. He said he's got nobody on the bench. No man on the bench. Can you read the, the bench of well, he, came in on the bench? Well, Esposito came in a couple of I times mean, so far. The guy, so how old is the guy? Nothing but excellent players. He's like nineteen. He's like he's young. So but what? Seventeen. Look, seventeen. Yeah, he's, he's young. Like but look, at the end of the day, he has a point to a certain extent. What what he has a point is yes he doesn't have a full squad he can't Politano got an, another injury we don't know how long he's out for they don't they they took out Lukaku brought in Politano they don't have anyone else they can't right. rely on Esposito to come in and do something why this, not uh, things that why not what do you mean keep going 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 uh, the other the other thing basically you can't uh, uh, Conte is very emotional when he talks and I feel like. It's, that's something that we liked, and Mar me and Marco talked about this uh, in the group chats and stuff. But uh, he can't be throwing his bus, uh, th throwing his players under the bus like that because it could seem very disrespectful, like just like that. Like how Anto was saying, it was like, how's he, how's he speaking to us like that? Even though it is just the media, you gotta have some respect. And Conte, at the end of the day, whatever happens, if you're up 2 0 against Borussia Dortmund, you shouldn't lose that game. In exactly. The second right, round. but exactly. it, but so, his point you know, was that he doesn't have uh, the players that have played in Champions. I get that. League. But he said that ham, you know, he said that he talked about his depth before. But at the end of the day, that match is on Conte. That's not on no one else. You're up two zero. Didn't he win half in half San Siro? You can't lose he that did game. win in San Siro, did he? So yeah, he won. So what but happened? But you're up two zero. So, but what happened? What happened with the game in San Siro? What happened with the game? Just the, it's the change of climb. You see, the, the thing is, uh, well, Dorman's a very tough place well, to play away. They are. But uh, listen, yeah. there's there's two points to this. And there's both truth and there's things that Conte said wrong. Um, and part of what, what Conte was saying was the, the depth, which is true. But at the same point, uh, you know, he doesn't have the depth to compete on all fronts for 90 minutes yeah. is the point. He doesn't have, he's not able, he strains his players. He doesn't have the guys that could compete for Scudetto in the league and also compete in Champions yeah, League. Doesn't. The only thing is, when you're 2-0 up against Dorman, Right, and you're complaining about players after the match. If you're if you lose to Barca, I understand. Barca, they put in Dembele, who spent ninety million on in the bench. Or Real Madrid. Dortmund's team and Inter's team is not that far off. I agree that he has no good players that come in off the bench. They're really not that good. But the problem with Conte is we saw this is an exact flashback of what happened in 2012. If with you're Juventus. Juve, if you if you remember Juventus in 2012, this guy could not control his emotions in the press conferences. Yes. Conte is one of my favorite coaches, but this guy in press conference, if you saw the video, he was about to have a panic attack. He was hyperventilating. The guy doesn't know how to speak to the media, and, and I think that there are certain ways that you have to say stuff, and political ways, and yes, we don't enjoy Maybe it. Maybe sometimes you shouldn't say anything in front of the camera. Exactly. Just make, wait, just go back. Exactly. Calm down. Even count if you're to right. Ten, count to 10, and say, okay, is that, is Maybe that a good idea to concept. say what I actually exactly. believe, or is probably... Let's exactly. quiet it down and then, you know, on exactly. a fresh mind, let's see what comes out. Exactly. The bottom line with this guy here is making $10 million a year. 11. 
11 million dollar oh my god 11 million dollar he you can sign some of the best players no no he can wait a moment he just made no, no, wait no, no, a moment salary. that's his salary okay. that's his salary this guy okay. was bragging about getting Zeko Anto count to 10 <laughs> This guy, this guy, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's done. This guy, he wanted to bring Zeko into Inter Milan. What else? I mean, into Inter. Yeah. Maybe he wants uh, what? Vidal, 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 Messi. He wants everything. <laughs> he wants everything. The Rangel. bottom line, this is what's happening. You had Icardi, okay? And Nine him, and, one That's second. His... Him and Marotta, him and Marotta, the gurus, you know, those have been best friends since the Juventus, uh, you know, experience on, uh, what's that, 2012. Yep. So what they did, since Marotta cannot handle Vandanara, because he's not a gentleman, but you're telling me that you're sitting down with Vanda and you do not agree with Vanda and you let Icardi, a player of that caliber, live from Inter? Are you crazy? This guy, this guy should be fired. I'll tell you oh. what. Marotta, Marotta is a bust. That guy is a bust. How about okay. Nangolan? Oh, Nangolan, I will never let him go. Never. Conte, yeah. even what's funny is Nangolan yeah. in an interview Listen. said that. Nangolan in an interview recently said that Conte told me, he's like man to man, I respect Conte because he told me straight to my face. He said, I always wanted you on my team. He goes, but it's not my decision. He's like, the guys upstairs are saying that you I see, can't keep you. you he see, said, for me, you would always play in my team. You see, you're telling me that you're sitting there, you found out, okay? I mean, you look a little different than Bob. <laughs> You are Vanda, so. and that's me. You are Vanda. She's she's a great manager. She's pulling all the string for Ricardo. Why wouldn't she? So if you are a smart manager, listen to me. <laughs> if you are a smart manager, you make Vanda believe that she won. In other words, she won the little uh, fight, but at the end. Who's, who's, who's getting the benefits was the guy that wins the war so he lost the little fight and he lost the war but we don't know the so full story Icardi that, so we can't doesn't see. matter keep going. Keep the only full going. story is that Icardi is gone so and Icardi he, has 8 goals in 10 Champions League matches by he's the way. a waste this is incredible how much is he making this guy here Marotta Marotta how much is he making know. a lot but of money the, I'm the, sure he's making but the problems with, uh, with Icardi started before Marotta he has nothing to do yeah, Marotta they started before. Marotta. I mean, they took his his uh, captain band yeah. away Who from him. Who did? No, no, during Marotta's era. Who did? But he had been there the, not too long when he got there. That no, guy. He, yeah, he that. got there in like October and then it happened he like. He was fairly new, I think. Yeah, February. I mean, he, he just got there. But the problem. That's because he started putting the line down. Right, but exactly. because but the problems were there before Marotta came. There was always problems. With, yeah. uh, with, um. Marotta and Icardi. Conte, they're bullies. They're two bullies. Okay, first of all, they're not, one of them is not, not even a gentleman. I like to see Marotta having an attitude like that with his wife, whatever he did to Vanda. Vanda should have just said, hey, Vanda, by the way, come on, let's, let's come to the middle. Let's, uh, let her make her believe that she's getting what she wants. Wanda and at baby. the end of the day, at the end of the day, you get to keep Icardi. Icardi is one of the four or five best strikers that you have in the Serie A, actually in Europe. Okay, and you let somebody like that go. But saying that, could you imagine how big the problem was that we don't even know? And then you, and then you go looking for Zeko. Are you crazy? What does that tell you? Though? Are and you crazy? Then, and now and they're crying. That. Now yeah. they're crying that they need a forward somebody to back up Lukaku. Yeah. They have, hey, they have Lukaku. Lautaro. They have Lautaro. They have a lot of Both players. Of no, they don't have Just wear players. a big boy pants. They got nobody in the bench. What, what are you talking what about? Are you about? Yeah, yeah. What are you talking they, they about? They don't have anybody in the bench. A Primavera player. A Primavera no, player. No, that's BS. Antonio has part of a point. It is, partly, is it is partly true that, listen, you got the guys on the field, but I think that playing 90 minutes over two competitions is always going to be tough. Oh, yeah, Inter's objective was not yeah. to go that far. But at the same time, like Cap Capello was also mad at Conte's words too. You're not he talking about like that on the media in front he, of the camera. He he felt like it was disrespectful what he what he said, and and I agree. Though even if you say something that's true, doesn't mean that you're supposed to be saying it in public. Exactly. And the guy I, needs to what? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Which is which is a wrong way because also again another example just like Napoli. All your dirty laundry. Yeah, let's let the media run with this. Let's let them cause more problems. No, this kind of stuff, you don't say, the director needs to come over here. I don't have my guys. This is exactly what Conte did at Juventus and the reason why he got kicked out. This Listen, is the same exact this thing. This guy here is when anytime that he wins a game, he's all oh, me, 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 me. It's, it's only him. Oh, wait, me. Conte is me, all right? So he loses the game. He's starting, starting to go wrong. All of a sudden, he's starting to point their finger at somebody. That's a he lot actually of... put the ownership on the spot by saying to Zuni, uh, Zuning, what's that? Zuning. 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 And uh, what's his name? Marotta and company over there. I said, hey, no. you, guys, you guys didn't buy me. 
what I want it. He feels like this guy's a little baby. You know the song that says, I want it all, no. I want it all, keep going, keep going. I want it all, <laughs> and I want it now. So this guy here, he wants everything and he wants it now. So if you don't give it to him, he's going to throw you a temper tension. So you know what I will do? <laughs> I will just let him pack up. See ya. Okay, that's what I would have done with somebody is, is, like that. Is he a loser? He's a big loser. Big loser, especially when you're complaining in front of the camera. He's a huge loser. Loser, content, loser. Um, no positives for him? Nothing. Yeah, no, oh. I like him as a person. I mean, he's from, my, he's from my region. Hey, 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 hey. But uh, when he, we're talking about soccer here, you are a loser. Nah, he's not a loser. Um, That's it. I think that, that he definitely should have taken uh, more faults for this match in particular, even though, again... Both sides, yes, there's truth in, in what he said. Take responsibility. But there's, there's ways to do it, and there's also responsibilities that I think that he should have taken because, again, 2-0 up against Dortmund, I really don't think that you could be complaining as much as you can. Yeah. Again, it's not Barcelona. Did you ever, see Gattuso, did you ever see Gattuso uh, complaining no, about that? but Gattuso's no. never won anything. So That's a matter. That's a matter. For Inter, for Inter to qualify, again, things are very complicated. Um, there's three scenarios. They could tie to Sparta Praga, um, win versus Barcelona, and BVB would need to beat Barca, or win versus Sparta Praga, tie versus Barca, and Dortmund can only pick up one point out of their two games, or they have to win both games against Sparta Praga and Barcelona. You win both, you're in. If you tie one or you don't win you one, leave it to someone else. You're 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 starting to leave the faith in in other so people's hands. Well, Barca has so, to play Dortmund in Barcelona. But Barca tied to Sparta Praga. Their team is not good. Valverde, I mean, there are already links that Valverde might go. There's Allegri rumors um, to Barca. But I'm just saying that just to say that it could it could get very that's a tricky. Shame. That's yeah. a it could shame. get very tricky very fast. And that's why you never want to leave your fate in somebody else's destiny. You know, you don't want to leave your hands in somebody else's destiny. And this was a great opportunity for Inter. At least you can't lose a match. At least in this yeah. kind of game, you a have draw, to be able to yeah. close it in. Exactly. And again, like I'm just thinking about the errors that I had over here. You got Skriniar, De Vrij, and Godin, Godin, right? You can't really improve that much out of those three players. So where are the mistakes? There's mistakes right there tactically in this match, probably- which, is, which is part of it. I get that you don't have the subs to come in, but also there's mistakes from the starters that are playing. Yeah, exactly. Wait a minute. Okay, Gallardini is not a good sub anymore. No, he's horrible. You got to be he's kidding not, me. He's not, he's, horrible. Horrible. he's not good. You got to be on, Anto. kidding me. Anto, he's horrible. The Sino too, he started, he's not that good. But he's not good. No, not good. What? Yeah. what is that? All of just because you score, you're a good. No, this is, not, this is not great players. This, not, this is not to compete for Scudetto and try to go far in Champions League. All of a League. sudden, those are great players. That they, Nobody, they are national I, team players on their squad. Guy, when did Gagliardini play for the national team? One time? Yeah, on the bench. When he was at Atalanta, maybe? The Sino played on... on uh, okay. Hey, Uruguay, okay. What does that mean? Just because you play on the national yeah, team. it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it the doesn't mean that much. The level of some national teams aren't the best. What do you think about that? the argument about the depth? Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, when he looked at... He had Sanchez. I mean, but Sanchez is hurt. He's hurt, yeah. So when he looks in the bench, who does he see? A 17-year-old? I mean, uh, when... Politano, uh, Politano's when, not a good player. When other teams not look in the, in the bench, they see Dybala. They see... Uh, Douglas Costa. Douglas Costa. You know, you want to compare those guys... To what, uh, what, what Inter has on, yeah, on the bench? You can't compare those two. Douglas Costa is a world-class player. But at the same time... Dybala is a world-class player. But you're not playing Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, you're not playing, like you're not playing uh, Real Madrid, Madrid, Madrid or somebody else. else. But Borussia is a good team. They are. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not a great team. They don't have Dybala on the bench. No, but at home... I mean, yeah. at home, they're tough. But we're yeah. not talking about just one game. Yeah, we're exactly. talking about yeah. the whole exactly. season. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. also, look at the... Like, I think Conte brought it up, too. He's like, look at our 4-1 against Sassuolo, and they came back 4-3. That's true. He's like, there, true. there are real re- real problems yeah. in the way that they That could end it ugly. Exactly, exactly. Real and there's ugly. he still has that extra, you know, push that's able to get them over those humps, but it's not perfect. And, it, you know, it's just very early. It's also yeah. that he's completely over exceeded expectations of how far along they are in such a short amount of time that we do create some extra The bar problems. is so high. So yeah. if but you don't I mean def- but uh, out of all the new coaches from this year, he's, he's doing the best. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's one of the best. With the team he has too. Yeah. Take that in consideration. I don't know who else you could say is... Not yeah. because he deserved it. He got lucky. He got into Come some on. lucky situation. He got into some this lucky part, situation. I don't agree, I don't agree with There's that. luck in everything. But at the end of the day... Listen, on the paper, with what you have, you're supposed to be not losing a game. Well, no. man, with the paper, 
Copa with AC Barcelona Milan and yeah. the game. You spend you spend what do we have? Man City tied to Atalanta. Every big team you they spend have bigger budgets. They don't 250 win million dollars. In, in 5 years. So well, divided no, by 4 no, no, it's no, like 50 no. million dollars a year. In the in the last couple of years you spent 250 million. You guys are and having, what do you got? You have fuzzy you got? Mats when you do what the did the, What did the coach do? What did your coach do? Jump out. Jump I didn't pick him. Well, I didn't pick doesn't this guy. Matter. He was a new coach with a new philosophy. Where did he go? I think Conte is a new coach with a new philosophy. He's in second place. Exactly. He's well, on my Even look at, look at Ancel yeah. Ancelotti in two years at Napoli. Exactly. Yeah. It's his second year at Napoli. Exactly. With, with, to me, Napoli on paper have better they players do. than, they than do. Inter. That's, that's and, and Inter so are much hard further Napoli. along. Spalletti's Inter last year yeah. to what, uh, what uh, Conte uh, is doing with, uh, with the Inter. I could say position. it. I could say, oh, oh, where I they are. I want to see what is the major uh, difference with all the money that they spend and all the players that they got. They are how many further, more points do they have? I don't know how many, Three but I did recently see. It was something like that. But listen, they're in the title race right now. And they're yeah, one point from uh, from the time. first place. What are you talking about? And they're also in a very tough group, also in Champions League. Let's remember. Barcelona, they got Barcelona, Dorman, and Sparta Praga. Yeah, Sp Sparta. Sabia Praga? Sparta. Barcelona Sparta. is the They're only very team. difficult. They've proved to be difficult. Barcelona is the only team. Dorman, come on. But the point is, the point is to you saying they should never lose a game. Barcelona lose games. Real Madrid okay. loses games. That's not, Manchester City that. loses games. Every team. Liverpool loses games. To Napoli, they lost they, Napoli. They, they were tied. Who did they tie recently? They tied a team. I mean, every big team. doesn't matter. You're always going to lose games. I think that Conte, again, truth in it, there's a certain way to go about those truths. Conte and is you not shouldn't be doing great, it in front of He's not a great coach. He was never a great coach. He's not a great coach. I will probably not be a, a, will never be a great coach because of his attitude, number one. And because I think he's so full of BS. Okay. You know what I do like though about him? I like I, I appreciate the spirit to be upset and be competitive. Yes. I do appreciate it. But again, there's also a way to go about it. Take it like a man. Like just, Sp sometimes just, Spalletti was too happy after he lost the game. Maybe it's like Amotella. It's like, come on, like maybe, be a little bit mad. Maybe it's not good enough for or uh, on in transmitting to the players what he wants them to do. This is the basic line. This is the basic point. When your team is not moving the way you want them to move, maybe it's your problem. Maybe you're not a good communicator. Also, is there an argument really? Like, I understand that these players have never won. Like, Sensi and Barella are the two that he did. But Kedira has won a lot. Rabiot has won a lot. I would prefer Sensi and Barella over Kedira and Rabiot. I think we just use that just for his case. I know. So I'm bringing up the case right now. Yeah. No, I don't think it's a valid I'm, excuse. Why not? What do you mean why it's not? It's not. Listen, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm listen, okay. you, you went I would take Sensi and Barello yeah, over Rabiot no. and Kedira. That's not you do want to say that. Yeah, you or give it to me. Give you, it to me. Juventus wins games just on experience. Exactly. Games that you're supposed to lose and you deserve to lose, they win. But because they have experience. The and mentality. Then the mentality. They know what to do. So, Gatano, okay, you are enough. saying, you are saying that, Gatano, right. just, you need just two, three players with experience for you to put yourself over the top. Well, they have Godin as the only one. Well, well so. Inter's got one. In Juventus, 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 you have all, one, all, all of them. Yeah, Ronaldo, Iguain, Chiellini, uh, You Bolucci, have all of them. Uh, yeah, they, they have one a lot. Ronaldo? Yeah, but, the, you know, the quality of the game and the play that Juventus, Juventus is exhibiting, is it's, it's not... Yeah, no, it's much better. But I'm just saying, when you're when you're arguing midfield, I would take besides Brozovic, he's the only one I would leave out. Sensi and Barella to me are better than than Kedira, Matuidi, Emerson, Bentancur. Well, they're creative. All of them are, are much better. Mistake. So it's just a little bit weird that he picked out those guys. And I understand his point where they don't have experience to you know handle well, the game. The, the point but there was that they players. have no experience. Okay. Anyway, so who you think they're gonna pick up Gatano in January? If there is anybody to be... So, uh, apparently, Marco, he said he needed three kinds of players. He wants three players. Yeah. One was a striker. Which is um, a vice... Uh, Ibrahim Ibrahim Lukaku. Lukaku. We don't know who it is. Yeah, we don't know. One Ibrahim. was a... A wing back. A wing back. Which could be Darmian. Mm -hmm. No, that will, play is not that, that will play both wings. Which Darmian... Is Darmian an upgrade to what they have? No. And the other one's so. a midfielder, right? And no, yeah, the other one is Vidal. Vidal yeah. back of Rock. God. So they're going to have Vidal. They're going to have a no, no, Brozovic. He's saying, you know, possible. Yeah, Come that's what they want. Ah. There's nothing wrong with that. If Which, you're competing for the Scudetto, three players isn't the craziest I think thing. Vidal, I, I think, think Vidal had said that he's not happy at Barcelona yeah, he said recently. He was. He's not so getting minutes. That one there. could probably happen. Um, let's yeah. preview some of the games real quick. Um, next week, Napoli against Genoa. Um, could be actually a very tricky one. Mota's for, playing good at Genoa right now. And, and especially because of what's happening in Napoli. What's our yeah. prediction? Napoli Genova, I think uh, it's going to be a tie. I'm going to go Napoli win. I'm going to go a tie too. Napoli. Napoli win. They would need it. Um, yeah. Cagliari Fiorentina. That's, That's actually a good. great game on Sunday. Cagliari is at home, and at home we know that Fiorentina is winning. Fiorentina is winning. 
We'll tie. A tie. I'm going to say a Cal UD win. I think Fiorentina that, win. Ribery still not back, Fiorentina right? I think this win. is the last game he's out. Um, Sampdoria Atalanta. Oh, Ribery's not in yet? No, I don't think okay, so. Okay, Fiorentina no. wins too. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you uh, say? Sampdoria Atalanta. I hope Atalanta, Atalanta doesn't have the Champions League hangover. Uh, Sampdoria's been playing good. They got their, they got a win. Their last, uh, they're looking good under Ranieri. Ranieri. Atalanta. No, Atalanta, uh, Atalanta. Atalanta. I'm sorry. Um, Atalanta? Sampdoria, Sampdoria Atalanta. Atalanta. I'll go with um, Ty. 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 Parma Roma. Hmm. Gervinho scored last game. Our boy. I would Roma's say a tie. Good. It's a yeah, Roma, Roma win. It's a Roma. tie. They also play in Europa League tomorrow. It's a tie or Parma win. Before. It's a tie. Tie or Parma win. Tie. <laughs> <laughs> he said it 14 times. <laughs> Count to 10. <laughs> Did you say anything? Uh, oh, boy. oh, boy. Roma win for me. I think... I don't know. I think that... Uh, Parma, they're playing at home. Uh, Roma has been doing well. Roma. And now the game we've all been waiting for. Juventus, Milan. Oh, you guys going to win. Don't worry. Hi. Oh, it's, there's no competition. No competition? You I would say that. You don't Milan wins. <laughs> 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 Milan wins. Mark my words. Milan wins. I agree with you. Milan wins. Juventus. <laughs> Wait, you don't think, you don't think uh, Pioli Milan, could do something? Milan wins. <laughs> I, I agree with Antonio. I think Milan wins. Well, yeah. Mind games or no? My, no, my game. They got a great why team. Why are you smiling? History, then? Champions League, seven Champions League. You can't compete yeah, with that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so good, right? Guys, okay, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Antonio, finish it up. What do you got to say? Well, guys, don't forget that uh -huh. uh, you can have the radars with five stars all the time. And that we are this just to be make good. sure. We are on Spotify, MySpace, YouTube, <laughs> LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, I like Eminem over here, Mark and Mike, they say we have even on Microsoft. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So keep watching the podcast. Keep sending us no email for today. No email, nothing uh, like that. We, 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 what we, about merchandising? Do we have any sales? No, there's no sales. Okay, so but we're coming up with a sale. Yeah, right? yeah there's a link in the description to sign up. Right, I want to buy one of those uh, uh the, the jacket and the pants over there. I got you. Okay. You got okay. I got you. So, we're guys, also check the new merchandise. It's going to be flying off the shelf. Yep. Don't come and cry later that we, know, we need more. <laughs> so, I mean, we have, I mean, you're together, we have like a couple, 300 uh, uh, items. Sunday, Ludovico's coming on a podcast. Uh -huh. And I've heard you and him have some beef. I saw Ludovico oh. recently, and he's not happy with some of your comments from the podcast. Oh, really? Yeah, he's Good. Not. So Good. Sunday, look forward to that. We're going to be filming one. All right. Peter's away. Oh, brother. And Wait. I'm going to be away, too. Oh, you're going to be away? I'm going to be, be out of nearby because somebody... <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Wait, anyway, Sunday is going to be the last game that we're playing for the full season of the Brooklyn Italian. So uh, oh, nice. we are in good shape right now. What time? Uh, I think it's nine o'clock the game. So Maybe we're going to miss this big guy here. I'll be sure so, I'll miss that. <laughs> but uh, we're going to keep you updated, okay, Gaetano? Uh, but if anything, who, who we're we playing? I think it's uh, uh, Basley. Any Basley, good? yeah. Oh, they're Basley. good. They're excellent. They're good? Yeah. Scouting report? Yeah, I think they. Uh, they they, they're gonna lose Sunday because we, <laughs> we, need, we need to go to first place. And, and you're uh, the coach. Yeah. Well, the, were you there you last should, week? You'd be getting yeah. the same amount of scont if you ask. Did you see him. the thing that he said? He's like, we're playing like spaghetti out of here. So listen, the still <laughs> my voice is still not back because of the screaming that I do. The, but the uh, screaming from this podcast. Okay, that's what Conte should be doing with his players. Okay, instead of screaming a little bit more and just. Uh, Make them play like a unit. Don't complain. Unit. Don't do unit. the screaming <laughs> after the game, okay? okay? The time to scream is when you are on the field, Mr. Conte. Well, he does plenty of that. All right. Yeah. As always, guys, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you. And Europa League tomorrow. Forza Roma. Forza Lazio. Let's go.